Agriculture is the lifeblood of many rural communities. Strong agriculture provides villages with both sustenance and a source of income. Yet, there are many obstacles that must be overcome for this to be possible. Plant fungi must be prevented, weeds must be cleared, and harmful pests must be killed or driven off. Traditionally, these issues have been solved by the use of chemical pesticides and fungicides. However, chemical pesticides are both costly and harmful to the environment. Wood vinegar is a low-cost and low-tech alternative to hazardous chemical substances. This material can substitute for many chemical mixtures, acting as an excellent pesticide, weed killer, and fungicidal agent. In addition, wood vinegar can be manufactured using everyday materials, enabling even the most remote villages to become self-sufficient in their crop protection. With crops protected by wood vinegar, villages can afford to thrive while ensuring that their children inherit healthy land. To begin producing wood vinegar, a kiln must first be constructed. This kiln will hold the wood while it is fired and smoked. To construct a kiln, first cut the top off of a 200 liter metal barrel. Next, remove a 20 centimeter square from the lid of the barrel. This is where the heat will enter the kiln. Then, cut a 10 centimeter diameter hole in the bottom of the barrel. Attach an asbestos joint pipe to this hole. This is where the smoke will escape. Then, enclose the barrel. And bury it in dirt, leaving the asbestos chute exposed at the top. Tilt the barrel up by propping a 10 to 12 centimeter brick under the front of it. Construction of the kiln is now complete. Let us review the construction of the wood vinegar kiln. First, create the body of the kiln by cutting the lid off of a 200 liter barrel. Second, cut a 20 centimeter square out of the barrel lid. Third, attach an asbestos chute to the 10 centimeter hole in the bottom of the barrel. Finally, bury the assembled kiln. Be sure to leave the chute exposed. With these steps completed, the production process, known as dry distillation, is now ready to begin. First, the kiln must be loaded with wood. This wood can be from any type of tree. Next, place three short pieces of wood into the kiln in a perpendicular layout. This arrangement will ensure proper airflow. Place the remaining wood inside the kiln with smaller pieces on the bottom and larger pieces on the top. Take care that no logs extend out of the body of the kiln so the lid may be placed over it. After putting the lid in its place, apply clay around the edges to create an airtight seal. This clay can be mixed with rice barn to increase its strength 
and resistance to heat. Next, create a small fireplace by placing four bricks in the following pattern. These bricks must also be sealed with clay in order to prevent smoke from escaping. A small fire needs to be started outside of the kiln in order to begin the production process. To be certain that charcoal forms, make sure that the wood inside the kiln is not in direct contact with the flames. This fire must be kept going throughout the production process as it is the driving force behind the production of wood vinegar and charcoal. After approximately two hours, thick white smoke should begin to rise out of the asbestos chute. This signals that the wood vinegar is ready to be collected. Let us review the preparation of wood vinegar. First, load the kiln with wood. Remember to lay three small sticks across the bottom to promote airflow. Second, place the lid on the kiln and seal it with clay. Third, create a small fireplace by laying clay sealed bricks in front of the kiln. Fourth, light and maintain a small fire in front of the brick fireplace. Finally, when thick white smoke begins to rise from the asbestos chute, the collection process is ready to begin. A bamboo pipe can now be attached to the asbestos chute. The bamboo pipe should have a notch in the following position to allow the condensate to drip out. Seal the connection between the bamboo pipe and the asbestos chute with clay to force the smoke up the bamboo pipe. Then wrap the connection in a wet towel. Wrap more wet towels along the length of the bamboo pipe, taking care to leave the notch unobstructed. These towels cool the smoke and allow it to condense into a liquid form that will become wood vinegar. If done correctly, thick smoke should begin to pour out of the notch in the pipe. Hang a bottle below the notch to collect the wood vinegar as it drips out. Soon the condensate should begin to drip into the bottle. Wait for several hours while the wood vinegar collects. During this time, the fire should be tended to, the towels kept wet, and the smoke watched. When the condensate becomes black, detach the bottle from the bamboo pipe. Pour the collected liquid into a larger bottle for storage. At this point, the mixture should be light brown. Then, seal the brick entrance of the kiln and asbestos chute so that it is completely airtight. The lack of oxygen in the kiln allows pyrolysis to occur, which results in the formation of charcoal. The following morning, 
Return and unseal the kiln, removing the bricks and clay. If the process was done correctly, the wood in the kiln should now be charcoal. Let us review the collection of wood vinegar. First, attach a long bamboo pipe to the asbestos chute and seal the connection with clay. Second, wrap wet towels around the bamboo pipe. Third, hang a bottle under the notch in the bamboo pipe and wait as the wood vinegar collects. Finally, once the drips of condensate become black, detach the bamboo pipe and seal both the kiln entrance and the asbestos chute. Now, collect the charcoal from the kiln. It is ready to be used. The wood vinegar condensate must be left alone for 90 days. In the bottle, it will separate into three layers. A clear oily top layer, a brownish middle layer, and a dark tar bottom layer. The middle layer is the usable wood vinegar. Use a syringe to extract this layer from the bottle. To use wood vinegar, it must be mixed with water. The ratio of wood vinegar to water depends on the desired application. For use as a pesticide, Combine 1 liter of wood vinegar with 20 liters of water. For use as a weed killer, combine 1 liter of wood vinegar with 50 liters of water. For use as an antifungal agent, combine 100 milliliters of wood vinegar with 10 liters of water. For use as a pest repellent, Anti-mold agent and plant growth accelerant combine 100 milliliters of wood vinegar with 20 liters of water. For use as an anti-plant lice spray, combine 50 milliliters of wood vinegar with 20 liters of water. For use as a growth enhancer in fruit plants, combine 100 milliliters of wood vinegar with 50 liters of water. Choosing to replace harmful chemical pesticides and fungicides with wood vinegar benefits everyone. The environment benefits from the removal of unnatural chemicals. The farmer benefits from the low cost and self-reliability of wood vinegar. The consumer benefits from a product that is safer and healthier. So why not switch to wood vinegar today? The benefits of this low-cost natural solution await.